Man walking his dog by river gets chills when he realizes they're not alone. But before we start, please make sure to subscribe to MNR TV and hit the bell so you never miss any upload from us. Also, leave a like right now. Oh, Florida, whether it's the aggregation of blue-haired retirees, its ever-growing competing theme parks, or its wildly frightening creepy crawlies, there's no place like it. When Florida resident Trent Twidale and his dog went for a morning stroll in the summer of 2020, the duo had an unfortunate encounter with one such terror. And sadly, it wasn't a granny on a walker. Trent was petrified when an aggressive animal approached him and his pooch, and things got ugly fast. Trent Twedale and his dog Loki thought it was just another ordinary day when they went for a stroll on their Wesley Chapel farm. But out of the ordinary events were lying just ahead. Considering Florida's climate is, as we all know, hot and muggy, little Loki dipped his toes in the nearby creek to cool off. What's the harm in that, right? Well, that's when things turned south. The six-year-old rescue pooch couldn't have been happier. That is until something grabbed him from below the water's surface. With its bony scales and jagged teeth, the monster appeared out of nowhere. Trent was in a state of shock. The dog had his front paws in the river here that swelled after all the rain, and the dog was attacked by a gator, Trent told WFLA-TV. Yep, that's right, an alligator. It's practically Florida's mascot. An enormous gator about 13 feet long pulled Loki into the water. The former Army Staff Sergeant didn't hesitate and snatched the dog's collar. The little brown and white pup with a black spot over his left eye was Trent's pride and joy, who he'd do anything to save. I grabbed the dog's collar to try to pull him back and I ended up in a tug of war match with this gator and the gator was not letting go, he said. Trent and the gator were neck and neck, with Trent literally trying to keep the reptile from gnawing on Loki's neck. Trent realized he was getting nowhere and tugging on Loki's collar could potentially choke the pup. Trusting his gut, Trent let the collar go before leaping into the water. It was time for plan B. So I let go of the collar and I got about knee deep into the water and started pounding on the gator's head until he eventually let go, Trent continued. He had no other choice. It was a miracle that the feisty reptile let go at all. Alligators have a chomp measuring 2,125 pounds per square inch PSI of force. For reference, humans have an average bite measure of just 150 pounds per square inch of force. If Trent hadn't acted so fast, well, Loki might have been chopped meat. With a jaw that strong, it's an absolute marvel that it didn't happen. But Loki didn't exactly escape scot-free. While Trent was lucky enough to get out with only a few scratches, the poor canine's front legs were nearly severed. He underwent emergency surgery, which felt like a nightmare. When I pulled him back, the bones were out and it looked like the arm was just hanging by a shred, Trent explained. It was a particularly horrific sight for the dog dad, who considered Loki his family. Loki's emergency surgery was very Frankenstein-esque. They put metal plates and screws in and were able to reconstruct it that way. We're hoping that he can regain full use of his paws after this, Trent said. The catastrophe, as you could imagine, affected Trent deeply. While you can look at it as simply nature's way, predator versus prey, the hierarchy of the food chain, that wasn't enough for Trent. He was angry. Trent made it his mission to catch the gator in question. He wouldn't rest until he captured Loki's reptilian attacker, even setting a gator trap in the swampy area where the incident occurred. Still, he needed help. With the aid of Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, Trent dangled a chunk of meat above the water surface to entice the creature. He hoped the scaly guy would leap up, snatch the bait, and set off the trap. But Trent didn't exactly use a spare filet mignon as bait. The trapper did not have any bait, so I grabbed one of my roosters, and we used him as bait for the trap. We haven't had any luck yet, he admitted. R.I.P. We love our dog a lot and I'd fight tooth and nail for him, Trent said, of his rescue pooch. Seeing innocent Loki with a giant cone around his neck and a powder blue cast wrapped around his leg motivated Trent to catch the alligator. Though his gentle dog wouldn't hurt a fly, Trent knew if the situation was reversed, Loki would have used his teeth to scare the pants off that gator and save his owner. 
In fact, the scenario isn't unheard of. James White had a knack for fishing, at least he thought he did, but that all changed when an easy day of fishing with his pup brought him into a close encounter with a dangerous creature. James settled into a spot by the shore at Bodega Bay, an area not far from San Francisco that appeared to be tame and quiet. As he expected, the morning started out slow, but then he felt a tug on his line. Grasping his fishing rod firmly in his hand, James felt that long-awaited pull, but strangely, it was more aggressive than usual. It was so vigorous, in fact, that the burly fisherman struggled to reel in the catch. White told NBC Bay Area that this went on for a staggering 10 minutes. The only way I think I was able to get the line back is because it was swimming towards me, James said of the encounter. While James pulled with all his might, he caught a glimpse of the aquatic creature as it got closer to the shallows. Still yanking on his sturdy fishing rod, the wire taut, James' eyes widened with utter shock. The fisherman was hauling in a six-foot-long, seven-gill shark. Cue the Jaws music. Clearly not having been in the best headspace, James tried removing the hook from the shark's mouth. It didn't go well. Reacting impulsively to James's approach, the predator immediately sunk his teeth into James's bare, vulnerable ankle. The water soon turned a crimson hue, and James was beyond scared. He could tell the shark had done serious damage. See, the teeth in their seven-gill shark upper jaws are sharp and jagged, which they use to hold on to prey. No doubt James felt a good number of them sinking into his leg and refusing to let go. The first bite punctured an artery, he told NBC Bay Area. The pressure was intense. In that moment, a panicked James desperately cried out for help, hoping a nearby fisherman would come to his rescue. No person heard him. However, James White was the owner of a then one-year-old, 100-pound pit bull named Darby. The dog loves James very much, and he'd do anything to protect him even if that means facing off against a giant ocean predator. And while James was gone fishing, the silver and white doggo was left to relax in the nearby car. Darby hung out of the windows and contently watched from afar until he heard a distressed James yell for help. He sprang into action. Once he reached James and the shark, Darby's initial instinct was to bite the shark's gills. That only made the enormous toothy fish angrier as it gnawed deeper into James's damaged ankle. His blood continued to flood the water. When James realized Darby's well-intended interference was only making things worse, he scolded him, having told him to back off. This didn't stop the pooch, though. As he knew his beloved James was in trouble, Darby had a plan B. Darby repositioned and grabbed it by the tail. He literally ran up the hill with it and pulled it off my leg. The traumatized... California resident explained to NBC Bay Area. James then flung the shark back into the Pacific. After the incident, James felt closer to Sweet Darby, who fully embraced the heavy title of man's best friend. James told reporters, he's been a part of my family from day one, just now a little more. However, the public's reaction was a bit more complicated than he expected. He absolutely could have been a lot worse, especially considering seven gill sharks can weigh up to 230 pounds and reach roughly 10 feet in length. James was lucky, too lucky in fact, if you ask people who heard this story. Because while James could barely believe the insanity that just occurred, neither could anyone else. No, really, people were suspicious of James' extraordinary tale of shark versus dog. The whole thing sounded fishy. The first time I told somebody this, they were like, you're out of your mind, there's no way that happened. James White said of his friend's literal disbelief. When James showed off his gnarly battle scars and photographic evidence, however, said friend was stunned. We're sure the shark attack survivor wore a proud smirk following his pal's shocked expression. James's bond with Darby is forever solidified. Thanks to the mighty pit bull hero, James White still has two legs. After all, encounters with deadly sea predators are nothing short of pure terror. Though James's experience was that of a real-life Jaws, the shark he encountered barely compares to the ghastly monsters that once lurked the eerie deep blue sea. Gone are the days of mega sharks, but you can still find traces of their terrifying existence in the present day. In 2015, a man named Denny Bland had been walking along the sand of North Topsail Beach, a popular surfing location along the coast of North Carolina. 
It was there that an odd object in the sand caught his eye. The object seemed, in some ways, like a piece of driftwood. Striations ran vertically down a dull tip, and the object's black base looked almost rotted. But Denny quickly realized that it wasn't driftwood at all. In fact, it was something much more terrifying. Just like Denny, our ancestors from centuries ago discovered similar objects, which they boldly declared petrified dragon tongues. Indisputable evidence of a terrible monster, of course. The scary part, however, was that they weren't too far off. That was because Denny had actually picked up the fossilized tooth of a megalodon, a massive prehistoric shark. Cynthia Crane, director of the Aurora Fossil Museum in North Carolina, shed some light on Denny's find and the monstrous predator. Megalodon was this large, humongous shark that roamed the ancient seaways during the Miocene and Pliocene time, mainly mid-Miocene to Pliocene, which was about 15 million to 5 million years ago, Cynthia said. Yikes. The enormous fossilized tooth of the beast only affirmed estimates of the ancient creature's size. The theory goes that a shark grows 10 feet for every inch of tooth. So a six inch tooth like the one that Denny found would mean its owner was 60 feet long. At that size, the megalodon shark would be three times larger than your run of the mill great white shark, its modern day ancestor. But how in the world did the sharks grow so big in the first place? Paleoecologist Dr. Catalina Pimiento offered an answer. Perhaps, she said, something was going on with the productivity and climate that produced that pattern, or with their prey and their competitors that made the species become large. After unearthing evidence of the shark, Denny was ecstatic. I couldn't get a million dollars and be any happier, he said. Even the small shark's tooth just excites the heck out of you. I felt like I was a lottery winner but he wasn't the only one who felt that way. In fact, according to a photographer for the Surf City Gazette, one or two megalodon teeth typically washed up on the beach each year. One man from West Virginia would have been happy to hear that. Greg Smith, a former community relations director at Camden Clark Medical Center, who later became a fireman salesman, shared Denny's enthusiasm for megalodon teeth. In fact, his enthusiasm pushed him to collect fossilized teeth I was trying to think of something that was good for grandpa and grandson, Greg said, and in his research he learned about the megalodon shark and all its massive teeth, so he dispatched his grandson to research them. After researching, Greg's grandson returned. He said, Grandpa, it's a huge shark with a mouth as big as a garage. Happy that the shark piqued his grandson's interest, Greg sent him a giant tooth of his own and the kid loved it. Over time, Greg collected more fossilized megalodon teeth until he had what he called a huge collection. And he wasn't kidding. As of 2018, he had over a thousand megalodon teeth in his collection. Naturally, even the most enthused megalodon fan would be a bit relieved the enormous animal didn't make it out of the Pliocene era. Believe it or not, some weren't so sure the enormous animals leaving teeth all over the coast were really extinct to begin with. Numerous reports from off the Baja coast in Mexico, pictured, alleged a massive black shark routinely patrolled the waters there. This shark was seen so often that it even earned a nickname, the Black Demon of Cortez. But was it real? If you'd spoken with fisherman Eric Mack, you might have thought so. He claimed the Black Demon rocked his little boat and stuck an enormous tail out of the water. Skeptics, however, weren't so sure about his story. After all, the Baja waters were already known for a diverse ecosystem. Eric and others could have just seen a big old whale shark, even quite possibly just a really big great white shark with skin defects, could they ever know for sure. Until the reports could be confirmed, collectors like Greg and Denny would keep legends like the Black Demon of Cortez alive. As people collect and find megalodon teeth along the shore, We'll never forget the unbelievable creature that we once shared a planet with. Whether the Megalodon still patrols the Earth's depths or it's extinct for good, it's crazy that something so rare can just wash up onto a public beach. After all, some of the world's greatest mysteries and secrets have been discovered purely by chance. And few people know this better than Jose Antonio Nieves, 
a simple farmer from the South American town of Carlos Begazzini, which lies just south of Buenos Aires, Argentina. For the most part, the relatively small Carlos Begazzini saw little in the way of action as the nearby capital city typically hogged the spotlight. That is, until Jose went out walking one Christmas morning. It was December of 2015 when Jose took a stroll on his property, looking for a bit of fresh air and exercise. He never expected to find anything that would change our understanding of history. Regardless, what he found might just have done so. Jose was walking the river that cut through his property along with his dog when something caught his eye, partially buried and caked in mud. A huge gray object jutted out of the edge of the riverbed. Upon closer inspection, however, he realized this was no rock. The boulder looked scaly like the skin of a snake, and at one end was a hole formed by a caved-in portion of the surface. Being a wise man, Jose knew this was something far more significant than he had previously thought. Hardly able to contain his excitement, he rushed home to tell his family about what he'd found. Hey, I just found an egg that looks like it came from a dinosaur, he exclaimed to his confused family. We thought it was a joke, his wife Reina said in an interview, but was it really an egg? When Jose found the egg, it was so caked in mud that he couldn't get an idea of just how large it was. Once he dug away the surface grime though, he realized just how big an object he was dealing with. In all, it was over three feet wide. Jose tried lifting the egg out of the shallow water only to find that it was too heavy. So heavy, in fact, that he couldn't carry it alone. That made him once again reevaluate what he was dealing with. No egg could be that heavy, so what could it be? As Jose and his family spread the word about this enormous object, rumors swirled as to its origins and nature. Could it be some kind of alien egg, or perhaps a vessel left behind on an alien expedition of Earth? Experts had other ideas. With so many competing theories as to what exactly they were dealing with, Jose called in the authorities, who got to work evaluating the discovery. Likely, they said, it was an armored shell. To what, though? To find the answer, they had to look back in time. That's where the Glyptodon, an ancient creature that resembled an enormous armadillo, came into play. Over 15,000 years ago, these herbivores roamed all over South America. Now, Jose had discovered the remarkably well-preserved remains of one. Jose's Glyptodon was not a loner in Argentina. In fact, archaeologists have discovered similar fossils scattered all over the country. Still, the high-quality preservation Jose found was raising some eyebrows. Skeptics wondered why the shell was right side up. Wouldn't these two heavy creatures likely have died on their backs or sides? And how did it spend thousands of years buried beneath the surface while suffering so few blemishes? After further studies, researchers determined the shell was, in fact, legitimate. Thanks to the mud, the shell was preserved for centuries. Still, something left researchers puzzled, an additional hole beyond those for the head and tail. Researchers concluded that if the damage wasn't caused sometime while it was in the ground, it's possible that the wound was what led to the creature's demise. Whatever caused that injury must have been pretty sizable itself. While cousins of the Glyptodon have been found throughout South America, none have been as well preserved as the one Jose found in his yard. To think that it was lying there all of those years.